Is, would you see the glass as half full rather than half empty? Yeah, I mean, interesting you, you put it this way. I think in January, the glass was half full, but market sentiment was very, very negative on China because it was... AI was too strong, Japan was too strong, China was just too hard. So fund flow was very unfavorable on China. Everyone see China as glass half empty story. So we see much more severe derating than what the fundamental was probably deserved. Where, whereas in the past two, three weeks, we see fund flow coming back to China, not necessarily because China fundamentally has so much dramatic change in the past one month, but also more probably because of what's happening in rest of the world in terms of the Fed rate decision, in terms of what's happening with the Japanese yen, what's happening with the AI cycle. So currently, it seems the market is more willing to see China as the glass half full story. But I would still say fundamental turnaround will be a, a, a quite long term story that property market, for example, home buyers are not going to suddenly believe, say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to go back and put that 5 million, 10 million RMB to buy the next property. The t turnaround will take time. Yeah, let's pick up on that, uh, that, that theme, uh, Winnie, because there seems to be a lot of attention on the wording and the language coming from the authorities right now with regards to how they're going to deal uh, with the uh, inventory right now, the unfinished projects. Um, there seems to be sort of a wait-and-see approach as to, you know, whether Beijing will, will come up with some sort of central funding um, for now. But in the meantime, we've had a lot of excitement around the likes of Hangzhou coming out and removing uh, those purchasing restrictions. So um, when you say it will take some time, when do you think could be the turning point and what do you think needs to be done um, in terms of um, a catalyst for some sort of more meaningful upside um, for I investors to, uh, to, to get into this? Yeah. So on the property side, there are, pro there, there, are, there are demand and supply side issues, right? On the demand side, I think what government policies has been focusing on more recently is uh, abolishing the purchase restriction policies so that market demand can be truly, fully reflected. Currently, I think in China, there are only six cities or regions that still have some level of purchase restriction. But besides the, those, it's mostly abolished. So market true demand will be better reflected, whether it's driving price or volume up or down, we'll see soon. And on the other side, on the supply side, you know, I think the, the very important change seems to be government policy now is more focusing on destocking. So potentially using the government funding to acquire and finish a project to ensure the project completion and to contain the overall supply of, you know, new stocks coming to the market, which will also help. But to your point, where is the funding? Right. Is central mm. government going to provide the funding? If so, how is that going to be allocated across cities? Because property is a very localized market. Right? The challenges Shenzhen face is very different from the market condition in Changsha, for example. So is it fair to allocate, say, 100 million, 100 billion to each and every city? If not, how is the central government funding be allocated or are they going to use some of financial institutions' money or going back to rely on local government funding vehicle or local SOE? So I think until we see better clarity, um, you know, the real execution mm -hmm. of the destocking process will probably still be a, a, a relatively long process. Mm -hmm.